All right, so I ain't know no better way of doing this. Um, I am going to basically kind of go over um, Amazon Flex. Um, I've been doing Amazon Flex for a little over a year. Um, it took me a while to actually put this together, like, just because I was lazy. And I, I recorded some stuff way back in the day. So, um, actually, I think a couple weeks ago. So... I'm going to basically kind of just go over Amazon Flex. If you've been curious about it, uh, we have it in our area, um, in the Northwest Arkansas area. And so um, I just want to also say, too, that things have may, may have changed since I've moved away from that area. Uh, so so things some, some things may have changed. But without further ado, uh, let's just, I'm going to kind of go over, I'm going to play some videos. Some of it has sound, some of it does. I'm going to go over a couple of different things. Um, I personally just do it. I, well, I still do it now, but I don't do it like I used to. Like the last time I did it was probably when I shot this video, uh, what a month ago. So I don't have a no need for it now, but, um, Anyways, let's get into it. All right, Mr. Bob, I'm going to go in. I'm going to show you how to accept the Amazon Flex Squad. Okay. So, go to your. And yes, I know that this watermark, it sucks. I actually have this software, but for some reason, I wasn't able to register the software because I registered it on a different computer. And, this, and I have a brand new computer, so. And this, and I've had this software since like 20, 2009, 10, so. Go get check for available blocks. So you can buy available blocks. You already got the time, how, many, how long it's going to be, and it'll pay. Now I'm going to do the three hour block because three hour block is pretty good. And the other blocks, typically I end up having to go down dirt roads. I don't have a car for that. If you have a uh, SUV, all by, by all means, go ahead and collect it. But I'm going to do the 12 or 30. Now, what I will say, though, uh, too, there's actually a section you can go, and they just recently came out with this, but there is a place you can go to actually signify, like, what do you have? Do you have a car? Is it gas? Is it electric? Is it a pickup? Because they actually do the available blocks based upon your car. That's important because, um, like, for instance, when I first started doing Flex a year ago, I was getting packages I could barely fit in my car. <laughs> and as I've got, as I've, you know, as the months went by, I noticed my packages are not as much. Because my packages used to, like, be up, whole trunk would be full, the whole back seat would be full, too, almost where I can't see in the back glass. And then I had stuff in the front. It was crazy. But now, because I signify this, I'm only getting blocks that have enough to where I can put everything in the trunk and then put some sections in the back seat, and I still can have clearance. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but that has changed a little bit. The other thing I want to say too about some of these blocks, these this a lot of times changes. Now, this is a low, this is a Northwest Arkansas area. You're probably living in an area like if you live in like Philadelphia or New York or L.A., trust me, this is going to you, you're going to get way more blocks, more time slots, prices like your best bet is to check hour by hour, because as you see down here. This two to six, it's almost one hundred dollars, but up here, this twelve to three. Uh, if you see my mouse, this 12 to 3, you can't see it by the watermark, but I would tell you it's a 12 to 3. Um, that's a four hour block. One, two, three. Hold on. It may not. I thought that. I thought that was a four, three hour block. Anyways. Um, sorry, it's not a four hour block. It's a three hour block. But the 12 to 3, sometimes you'll have another 12 to 3. I mean, another, uh, like you might have like a two, two to two, three, four, five, two to five, right? And it might be like $56. So you want to kind of look at the price too. And a lot of times what you can do is you just keep hitting refresh and sometimes blocks will disappear. And then sometimes blocks will reappear. New blocks will reappear. So you just got to keep checking it. 
So you got the time, C4, and then you just hit schedule. Now, something else I wanted to say, too. Northwest Arkansas is not that bad because there's, like, no time limit, really. You just need to deliver everything by, like, 9 p.m. In other markets, I saw where you might have an actual, like, time cutoff where you got to deliver your packages. And if you don't deliver them by that time uh, slot, then you pretty much have a mark on your record. But here in Northwest Arkansas, they just, you just got to deliver it by 9 p.m. Don't even matter exactly, even though this is a 12 to 3, as long as I deliver by 9 p.m., I'm good. Time today at 8, and then you'll just do schedule. And there you are. So once you can refresh, and again, that's how you set the... A block. block. Yeah. Here. Now... I'm going to go over this because some of the stuff I do know. So your update, this is supposed to be where you actually update the application. Your schedule is going to show. Um, I feel like schedule is pointless, but it's supposed to. I think it's good if you have like a Whole Foods. It's supposed to show. Um, it's supposed to show. Like, uh, like your schedule, like the uh, blocks that you've actually um, selected. Um, and then you're, you got your offers. So your offers is what we just did. We just basically selected a block. Your dashboard is going to give you like details about like how you're doing. It's going to give you some um, things that you can improve on, what you shouldn't improve on. It's going to be some messages there that can help you with um, uh, your deliveries. Your calendar is where you're actually going to go to actually, like when you exit the app and you come back in, if you need to start the block that you just selected, you go to the calendar and then select the date and then you'll be able to um, start your uh, block. Your earnings is how much you make. And speaking of earnings, they just recently um, made it to where it used to be you get paid Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now you can get paid Monday through Friday. The only time you won't get paid is Saturday and Sunday. So if you do a block Saturday and Sunday, like I normally did back in the day, and on the time I would be able to do it anyway, especially today, um, I wouldn't get paid till Monday. And if you have the uh, flex card that they offer and you select direct deposit, you'll get your money that morning. Whereas if you just have a normal bank account, it will come the next day, but it could be, it's going to be dependent on, on whenever your bank releases the money. This help, this will give you customer service. Feedback, I don't know anything about that. I don't go there. Videos will show you how, videos is where they actually show, like give you how to um, pretty much do what I'm doing right now. Your settings, you can go in there, set some things up. That's really usually how you set up your direct deposit, car, all that stuff. Connected vehicle, we don't, I don't do that. That's probably for, the DSP drivers, where they can connect to their vehicle, and I guess it shows information on the screen. I don't, I don't have that capability, so. So where I went to it was calendar. If you go to the calendar, you'll select the. Um, date and then this comes up this gives you the pay you can go here that's uh forfeit block if you can't do it uh, i will tell you up front you need if you can't do it try to forfeit the block an hour before your start time that way you don't get deemed if you if you do it within an hour you'll get deemed and it shows you basically the location here where you're gonna go That's pretty much it, how you accept the block. All right, so once it's time to leave, you can come in here, schedule, and you're going to hit start. <laughs> once you do that, it's going to give you the route. Okay? Got to be there. It's going to tell you. I'll give you some insight on what you need to do. And then you just hit travel.
So once you hit travel, you just basically just follow the directions to get to your station, right? And this is this is where I'm at right here, where I'm traveling to the station. And then once I get there, I'll just click the arrive, but I've arrived button. Now, this is where you got to basically take a picture. Now, when you set up the app initially, which I can't show you that because it's already been set up. But when you do it initially, it's pretty easy. You'll take a picture. That picture is going to be like your verification of who you are. Um, so you're just basically going to take a picture. And you're going to do this every time you go to the station. You'll click use photo. And then it's going to identify my uh, identity. And once it identifies my identity, it's going to go to a different screen. And this is where I'm going to check in. Now, the thing about checking in, on the screen prior, when you're uh, going to the uh, site, it's going to tell you to arrive. Now, in my area, it's going to t it tells me to arrive. I can arrive up to five minutes after, allegedly. I would tell you that you need to check in between 11.45. Like, right now, it's 11.56. If it hits that 12 o'clock 12 mark, there are times where I won't be able to check in, so I have to get one of the workers there to check me in. And, and depending on, it depends on where you're at, too. Your station may be super strict. There's been, there was a time where I got stuck behind a train getting to the station, and I was literally... Um, I think I was like five minutes late. I got to the station and they wouldn't let me check in. So I just told them that, hey, you know, they won't let me check in. And, and they went on and checked me in. So. But yeah, you'll check in. And when you get here, verify your license. You got to take your license out and they're going to scan the back of your license. Your license information it's going to be in the app when you get it set up because they got they got to scan the back and the front of your license um, and stuff. But once you scan the back of your license, then you'll just hit the refresh button, and then it'll refresh to the um, to scan the um, the uh, cage that you get. Okay, so as you see, we hit the refresh button, and that pops up. Now it's going to tell you to pick up your route for a three-hour block. Meet in this uh, Amazon associate for your route code. Locate the rack. Scan the route code. Now, my site is kind of it's kind of like a, it's out in the open. It's like a you have like a almost like a um. A, a port but it's still in the open and where i'm at basically they're going to uh, direct you to where you need to park so you're going to be in these different blocks and then they actually uh roll out the racks and put it behind your uh, car once you they do that you can get out scan your code every else everywhere else is different you know so all right so once you get to your car scan, you're going to do scan uh, route code. You're going to locate. Now, right there, I hit when I was moving my phone up. As you see, or as you will see, I actually accidentally scanned the code on the car. You don't need to do that. There's a code on the actual paper, and you're going to see this here in a little bit. Right there. So this paper right here. So it'll give you information about the hours, how many packages, and it's going to tell you the different stops. And you got the barcode up above. Don't do this barcode here. This doesn't work. It's going to be a little paper deal right here. It's going to give you all your information. So right there. This paper is going to give you all your information. It's going to tell you 22 packages. It's going to tell you how many stops you have by each um, section. And once it gets that... Now, I wish I could, let me see. 
22 packages. Um, they used to get well. No, I see what I see what it is. This is gonna say 22 packages. I think I actually did have 22. Normally, the numbers are 22 because basically this number down here will tell you how many stops you have. Sometimes you have like one stop that has like four or five packages. I literally at this point had 22 stops, <laughs> which was crazy. All right, so then this screen pops up. Now, this is where you got, okay, so you got, okay, so here it is. I don't know why the paper normally says something different. So you got one pickup, which is what you're doing. You're picking up 15 deliveries. That's going to give you 15 stops. And I had 22 packages. Now, I want you to keep in mind from the, this was a long ass route. I remember this. I hated this route. It took me a whole hour just to get there. It took me a whole hour just to get here. But you have 15 deliveries. Okay. So from here, you're just basically going to um, view pickup. And you can scan and, and scan out. And then you kind of see where everything is at. You know, kind of get a, a, a bird's eye view of where you're going to be headed to. And then you ain't got to worry about too much about this. But I will tell you a couple different things. Um, right here, you're going to have two different locations now mine is the same because it's just, i don't know it, that that route was weird but sometimes you'll have like you'll have a, a letter dash number point number and then you'll have like a e this one is gonna be the same thing but this may be a f i'm gonna tell you right now your packages are gonna have this information on that little yellow sticker you need to i wish i had an amazon box Hold on, I think I do. Hold on. Scratch that. I forgot that was UPS. So I can't show y'all, but on the, on the stickers, you'll see this um, this right here, and then it's right here. You want to group these your packages together. So if you have E, make sure all your packages with the with the E is grouped together. Make sure all your packages with the F are grouped together. The rest of the numbers don't ma necessarily matter, um, unless you're driving, unless you're doing DPS, and that that might matter. But for just us, this this doesn't matter. Says so these two are all G's. It didn't matter. I only had like 22 packages. Sometimes your package number, and then the average package you're going to have is going to be about 40. Now, you're not going to have 40 stops, but you will have about 40 packages. You might have probably 30, between 30 and 36 stops. That's just kind of how, how it is. So you're going to scan package. So you scan the barcode. As you see, this one got scanned. Now, this is an overflow. So this, I think the overflow packages, as far as I know, these are packages that are not in that yellow container. Now, I got one of 22 packages. And what you're going to see here is I accidentally scanned one of the, the totes. See? See how I scanned the tote? Right there. This your this is how sensitive this software is. I literally just skirt scan this skirt right into it and scanned the whole damn pack. So now I got twenty two of twenty one packages. <laughs> so I ended up scanning the whole damn thing. This is where so these this number up here is where you're gonna have your twenty um packages. These overflow packages are gonna be outside of the box. So I already scanned that one. So now I got to scan. So I got. So I basically scanned everything. You see these check marks? They're all scanned. I didn't realize that I had scanned the yellow tote. So I'm up here trying to scan it. See what I'm saying? I'm up here trying to scan it. And it says, you've already scanned this package. And I didn't realize that. I was like, oh, I did. I was like, oh, shoot, I did accidentally scan everything. So... 
And I didn't realize that. So once I realized it, you just select. It says, y'all set to go. 22 packages picked up. And then you just swipe to finish. And then there you go. Now, this is your first route. I want you to take some. I, I'm going to try to see if I can do some things here. Okay. Right in here. You see, it says deliver by 9 p.m. I wouldn't worry about that because we was this is like 12. You're going to get this all done. Now, again, this is just my market. Other markets I've seen has been different. So I pull up, I swipe up for my first package. This number here, you want to go by this this four uh, four digit code. I wish I had, and there was no sticker on that um, box either. Or any of the boxes. Um, see if I can find. I forgot to take a picture of the actual box, but there's a yellow sticker. Okay, so you see the yellow sticker here. There's going to be a four digit code right at the bottom of this. Now, now, as you see, it says uh, A-1-G. Again, you want to make sure all your uh, packages are, are grouped together. So what I do, if I have G and F, so for instance, all my Gs will go in the trunk. All my Fs will go in the back seat. This is kind of how I do it. That way, when I go to my first stop, it'll give me, it'll let me know. Uh, it doesn't say it here, but when I'm looking for this number, I'll automatically know that, oh, okay, this is the F's. We're starting with the F's, so I need to go to, so I need to focus on the F's. And I know where all the F's are at. So I'm not spending a whole lot of time looking through packages. Because, again, I had 22, which was not that bad. But usually you're going to have about 40. You're going to go over this uh, four-digit number here. And it's going to tell you an envelope. Now, sometimes this right here is... It, it, <laughs> I think this is dependent upon if the workers actually scanned it correctly. What this um, this envelope is usually, I have to go, it's kind of funny because I, I wish I could go and uh, show you different. Because uh, it'll say box and it'll have like a S, M, or L. It may say custom if it's a custom or if it says custom. It just basically means that it's not inside the Amazon box. But say, like, for instance, if you buy, like, a monitor, most likely your monitor is, is already in a box from the manufacturing factory, right? But they're not going to place it in another box. They're just going to ship it out as is and just put a sticker on it. It's gonna be, That's basically going to be um, custom. Um, you don't even got to worry about this TBA number. That's – you can – if this number, because this number here you, has actually not appeared on this for whatever reason, you'll have to go by the TBA number. It's the only way you can, <laughs> it's the only thing I could tell you. It'll give you your address. If there's any notes, it'll let you know. Um, Like it says, it says make sure you go all the way down, please. If you're having issues, call the customer, which you can do. You can call, you can text. You'll go, typically, what you're going to do, you're going to go to this uh, question mark. And that's where you're going to go to call and text. This here is if you receive a message from maybe a customer on one of these routes. This is where you'll go to retrieve those messages. But after that, you'll just swipe down or swipe down. <laughs> you'll just, you can just click uh, start travel. So I try to show you, you can't really see it here, but that's a sticker and there's a four digit number that you're going to see. And that's what you're going to go by. You always have to pull this up. I wish they had it where this information was like right here and you won't have to pull up to see, but you know, okay. So you see here, you got your envelope. So this is going to be your prime envelope, usually the white envelopes. Sometimes 
Um, this here would be brown. And it'd be an env it'll say envelope. That's going to be your brown envelopes. Got your number. See, it says customized box. So I got my first envelope with the number. I don't know if I show the box, but okay. So another thing you can do, I want to show this cause this is, so you can swipe over the, you do the um, three bars. You could do today's itinerary. And um, this is where we're going to go. And this is going to give you all of your stops. All of your stops. Okay. The current stop we have, it says two. You can scroll down. Uh, I might do that there. But you can see these here, I've already made deliveries to. And here's my packages it doesn't give you much information but it does tell you that it's two packages and another thing if you want to you can actually just come down here and just click like if i want to do number nine first i can just click number nine do that delivery and it'll do all the, the rest of the deliveries and then it'll come back to the top to do the rest that i, I skipped Another thing I wanted to do too, if you go to a map, it'll show you where, where all your packages are at. And from here, you can actually click each number if you want to deliver to that pack, deliver that package first. And in summary, it's just going to basically tell you some information. I have 16 packages, 12 locations. I have 11 stops. One is a group stop. With group stops, if I recall, and don't get me, don't don't come after me in the comments, but group stops, typically what will happen is you'll have like one house you got to deliver to, then another house across the street that you got to deliver to. Those are grouped. And I wish I had screenshots of it. You have to be careful. Because when you get to a stop, it'll actually have that you're delivering two packages, but they're going to be at different addresses. And usually something will come up telling you, hey, make sure that this is not uh, two separate addresses that you're delivering to. So. Okay. So here I got two stops. It says home is at the end of the long drive, not the older farm home. So you got these two here. You got to make sure that these two addresses are the same. Because you see how the names are different, right? Names are different, but the same address. So that's, you just got to just kind of look for that. It'll usually let you know um, which each package, if it's at the wrong, if you're at the wrong stop. Here we're gonna go ahead and fast forward. I'm gonna to go to the first stop. So once you get to your first stop, because I had to pull into the driveway, as you see, I'm gonna click I've parked. And by the way, this is brand new edition too. It lights up the house. So I don't know why this one two one seventy six is. I may have, but it's what it sent me though. <laughs> So it's a plastic bag. So I'm going to be going to get my bag and I'm going to scan it. The barcode is scanned. And then I'm going to click continue with one bag. Now here, uh, if you hand a package to them, you can click the first option. Uh, it's rarely that you're going to click this. You may click this if you have to go inside of a business. But you're usually going to do front porch, front door. Uh, you can do rear door, rear porch. There'll be a message underneath there telling you that it's not the recommended um, place to leave the package, but you have to be safe, safety first, right? 
Um, secure mail room. I have never used that. I have used another safe location because sometimes, um, especially, especially if you're out in the country, sometimes people have like boxes. Um, they have like a long driveway, but they'll have a box that they want all the packages um, to be dropped off in. That's where you'll do another safe location. And hit continue. And as you see here, I'm going to drop the package off. Take a picture. It's going to be really fast. Um, here, I don't mess with this too much. You can add hours if you're delivering to a business. Uh, this will just give you information that way you that way when there's other packages that need to be delivered to this address we'll know what the hours are but the next thing you can do is you can retake the picture i i mean you can if you miss the whole damn picture i guess if you can't take pictures you can do retake picture and then you can just click uh swipe to uh swipe to finish at access code is wonderful um if you have to use a code and you know it add that that way other next time someone delivers to that address they'll have that code you just go into your next one here's the next package medium box that's my code it says beware of a dog at this location now in my experience in my area uh i live in an area that where <laughs> i'm using delivering to like high-end houses there may be a dog it's probably in the back they're probably inside um but it is important if you're going out in the country that you need to have this. And if you do see a dog and there's not no notes there, you can go up here to this question mark and there should be an option to select a location that has a dog. I wish I could show you that, but I wasn't able to. So we'll keep driving. We've parked. Oh, so. Once you hit the question mark, okay, here I can text a person, I can call them, and this is also, oh, here it is right here, report a dog on your route. This is what you would use if there is a dog in the front yard and you see it. It's up to you if you want to deliver to it. If you don't, then what you'll do is, first off, do this. Just be kind enough. If, it ain't, if it's not already on there, do this first then you'll do unable to deliver um once you do that another option will come down um and it'll, it'll give you some options to select you just select the best one as to why it is you're not able to deliver the other thing you can do too is like if you are at the address but your gps is saying that you're not you can just click this this will help too sometimes now, if you don't see this option, but you're at the address, you'll have to do driver support. And I'm going to tell you, driver support, they don't ask a lot of questions. You just tell them what's going on. They just do it. I will say it takes, I don't even call them. I actually text them. Now, you can't be driving and texting, but I do text them. And um, they, yeah, they get stuff done quick. But usually when I have to do driver support, is because the GPS is saying I'm not at the location when I really am. Or the customer wants me to deliver. They want me to deliver uh, the package somewhere that's not in the general GPS location. So I just that's why I would do driver support. Here you can do um, a text message, which what I'm gonna do. You normally want to do uh, notification notification of arrival, especially if you see that the location has a dog. That way that they give it gives them time to know that hey. This guy living in a package, if you have a dog, to make sure it's not chained. The other thing, too, you can do is, like, you can text them saying, I can't find the address or can't get access. And then the customer can re uh, text you back. Now, I normally call them if that's the case. All right, so we're going to do I've parked. We're going to scan our box. 
Got the box, we scanned it. Continue with one package. And as you see, as I'm moving, that moves with me. <laughs> so you'll never deliver at the wrong address. It will let you know, hey, this is not the right address. Because you won't be able to move from this screen. It will not let you move from that screen. You know, place the box in. I place it usually in the corner. That way people can't see it. Take a picture. And then swipe to finish. That's it. I got the next package. All right. This one here. Uh, so they made a they implemented a new feature. I don't like this feature, but they implemented a new feature to where you gotta verify a passcode word. Now, I don't know anything about this. Um, I'm gonna be blunt and honest with you. I have no clue. I have no idea about why this is, but it is something that they have implemented. So basically, what it is is you before you um, deliver the package. You have to hand in the packet. Before you hand the packet, you got to ask them for the one-time passcode. Okay. You're asking them for the one-time passcode. So this gives you instructions on what you need to do. And then once you get the passcode, so you, you, you scan it like normal. Continue with one package. Now, I will tell you with this route, as you, you see me moving. With this route here. I wasn't able to do, deliver the passcode because the person was at home. So I'm going to continue. And this is what they got to give me. Now, from what I've been told, and I've actually done this before another time after this. Um, so I'm going to tell you what, what happens. Amazon sends them an email the day of the delivery in the um, email with a six digit passcode. They have to give you that six digit passcode before you can handle the package. Now, you can go down here to help customer find one time passcode. I had to do that too, because I didn't know. So there it is right there. So it says we sent, I'm not gonna even try to say that name, an email with six digit one time password today. They can also check their Amazon account under your orders track package. So all they got to do is log in to their Amazon um, account and this is where they're going to go to get this six digit co uh, passcode. If they can't give you that passcode uh, or if it's not there, you just go here. Now, I don't know what this is going to do um, or it's incorrect. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I'm not, I'm not ever clicked it, so I don't know. So you can do it. But if they don't give you that six digit passcode, you can't deliver the package. And in this case, the person wasn't even at home. So from here, I have to do unable to deliver. Customer unavailable. Now here, I didn't even text. I just hit exit and then swipe to finish. Right, because ha I have to do the uh, passcode. So from there, I had to put that package in the back, and then I had to take it back to the facility. And we'll show you how to do that later. Now this one is interesting. Okay. So you'll hit our ride. Now this is says right here. If you see this. The bottom it says garage. Okay. You're gonna scan your package. I'm gonna try to show you this. It's gonna be kind of weird. So you'll just have to watch up here. So you're gonna scan your package. And what's going to happen is that garage door is going to actually open up. It's kind of cool. So you're going to wait. 
And you see up in a boxy how the garage is opening up. <laughs> and then once it opens up, I can just put the box in there. And I'm going to exit out the uh, garage. And I'm going to swipe. And then it's going to automatically close. Now, isn't that cool? And I get I get these every now and then. Um, but they're kind of cool. Um, and voila. That's it. So, as you see, we got two boxes. Front door, swipe. Now I gotta return. Now here's the thing: this is you can read this. Uh, you can return into the station now, or you can return by tomorrow morning by 10 a.m. Now me, I was tired. I wasn't really trying to. I'm just gonna be blunt because I'm I'm lazy. <laughs> so your boy wasn't really trying to travel all the way an hour to to the river the un. Um, the package I couldn't uh, deliver. So instead, I just chose to return by 10 a.m. Now, if you do return the station now, it's going to be the same process. So that's what I did. And then I can click continue. Now, it's my understanding that your delivery is not complete until you return the, that package. So. You're not going to get paid for it. Okay, so. Now, your earnings, this will show you how much, and you can see how, how much I've made. February, the weekend of the February, I made almost $140. These are uh, three hour blocks. Uh, three, four, five, six. Yeah, these are three hour blocks here that I made. So that's six hours that I worked for one hundred and thirty nine dollars. So that gives you some insight if you go to your earnings. All right, so we're gonna now go to. We're gonna have to return our package to the station. So we're gonna do return to station. And then. So we get there we're gonna do i've arrived and then you're gonna bring your packages to the uh to the rack scan your package swipe to finish and we're in the facility right now i'm just gonna give it to the lady and then got it okay and then she scans it and then that's it. Now, here, I just want y'all to see, this is my three-hour block that I did. Um, and this is, So I filled my tank all the way up. This is how much gas I wasted. This is how much gas I wasted. So it doesn't, so you're talking about probably $5 worth of gas that I wasted doing a three-hour block. And that's going to the facility dropping uh delivering dropping the package i couldn't de deliver the next day and coming back but by the time i got home i actually showed how much i wasted in gas so that's amazon flex peeps um hope that uh hope that gives you some insight uh, i know it was a pretty in-depth video but some of the videos i've seen out there that didn't go into too much depth uh, as far as the packages, I wanted to show you kind of instructions on what you can do, how to do it, show you what the screen looked like. Now, keep in mind, this was done back in April of this year. Things have probably changed on the app. There's probably new features. Uh, they're always changing things on there. Um, usually for the good. It's always for the good so far um, to make your life easier. So. Hope this is uh, insightful and hope you hope to maybe join Amazon. Y'all got y'all saw my name. So listen, 
Let them know that I referred you. Give me some money. <laughs> but anyways, I am out. Y'all take care. Peace.